so I have a potentially controversial topic. Um, let's get our hands dirty, right? Love it. I want to talk a little bit about chatbot GPT and AI generated art, specifically, you know, stable diffusion. And so if you've never heard those things before, allow me to bring you up to speed. Chatbot GPT is an online artificial intelligence uh, chatting robot that you can type in uh, various phrases of various kinds, um, and you can get it to respond. It can have, it can have uh, intelligent conversations, and it learns you can actually correct it. You can tell if it's right or wrong, um, and it will learn from your feedback, and it will propose all the solutions. Um, there was a recent study uh, that came out showing that it could generate cover letters. Um, and although the people who received the cover letters said that the cover letters were too formal, the study did not actually alter the cover letter in any way. They took whatever was spit out by the cover letter, that slapped the name on it, and sent it to an employer to see if the person would get a call back. So what's important is, is even though the feedback was this chatbot is too formal, Ultimately, some of the candidates did get callbacks. And so, you know, we're talking about um, a system that's incredibly powerful. Um, and by the way, I, I use Chatbot GPT. Uh, I use it for mundane things like helping me create, um, like helping me create things in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, since I, I play a lot, it's, you know, it's easy to kind of have a robot tell me if I'm, if I'm on the track or something. Um, mathematical formulas, there's a ton of things you can do with it. And ultimately, it's it's a very useful tool. And right now it's owned by, uh, it's owned by. So their mission is to allow AI to, you know, play for everyone, which is a great of it. Um, but, you know, it's, the, there are questions that will come up with it, and I'm gonna address those a little later, but let me introduce um, Stable Diffusion first. So AI art isn't necessarily the newest thing, but it isn't, but it is constantly evolving, getting better, and the newest version of AI art, it, AI art is Stable Diffusion. And Stable Diffusion is just a different way of using uh, formulas to generate quote-unquote artwork, um, even just me calling it artwork, video like totally disliked and mean comments or whatever. Um, but fine, whatever. Essentially, if you you go into a, um, a website, and so there's there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's Mid Journey, there's Night Cafe, there's, there's a whole bunch. And honestly, if you just look up AI, AI art generator in Google, you'll easily find one. Um, and so you click Stable Diffusion as your method of creation, and then you pick a style. Some, some of these websites will give you the opportunity to, to do a style, like a sepia style, or a style, or a video game style, or a 3D style, whatever. You get the point. And then you just type in some words. Um, uh, you know, uh, rabbit in a black hat, just for example, right? And it was just Chinese New Year, and it's here's the rabbit. Whatever, let's just, <laughs> let's just say it's, uh, a rabbit and a black hat, right? Or a black rabbit and a white hat, whatever. Whatever you put in, it will attempt to create an art, uh, it will attempt to create an image for you based on the style that you chose. And it's it's taking um, lots of, uh, it's taking lots of art that's published and unpublished throughout the world, and it's indexing those, um, which by the way is a computer term for kind of uh, things, and then categories um, by, uh, of categories. And using that information that looks similarly enough to uh, a rabbit and a hat, that being a certain color and the hat being on the rabbit, right? And so, and if you haven't given it an idea for a background, then it will just give you what it thinks the correct background based on what a rabbit and a hat, where rabbits and hats typically interact. So maybe it'll give you the circus, maybe it'll give you a green field. Who knows? Doesn't matter. It's just an example. So there are lots of concerns about um, AI artwork. And one of the concerns is an, uh, an intellectual property. Uh, the, images that, um, the images that are being used to generate this art probably were used without paying royalties to the actual artists. So the artists are not getting compensated fairly. Um, and then the second set of concerns is, hey, this actually, this might be used to put artists out of business. 
And by the way, chatbot GPT, there are some concerns that that'll happen for that too. Things that chatbot GPT can do is it can code. Now, this is really interesting because typically we expect people to be coders, right? Um, and so if this robot can code, then all of a sudden there's concerns that some of those people don't have jobs or that the, the workforce required um, is more minimized than it would have been without chatbot GPT. And so I hear all of these concerns, but I actually want to take a step back. I want to think of these as not things to be feared, but actually really exciting innovations in what work means. In theory, now, caveat, right? Side real quick, caveat. Capitalism is not going to allow us to work less. <laughs> Capitalism is not going to allow us to reap the benefits of an automated system. It's going to funnel all of that wealth up to the very top. Capitalism does, right? It generates wealth at the top and strangles those at the bottom, just the way the system is. Okay, back to mainframe. Um, but if you think about what work could be, what work should be, then what we can say is there is a formula out there that says if you generate an image that uses a certain that uses certain artwork, then that artwork gets a royalty. It can be like a, it could be whatever. There's there's there is a just number out there, right? The AI uses something, um, and by the way. For commercial use, that there has to be payments, and, and so it doesn't have to be. Actually, lots of legal solutions here. It, it you know, essentially with the Spotify model, just not as disadvantageous to the artist as the Spotify model, but you get the same basic idea, right? Every time you play a song, every time you generate a piece of art with a certain um, rendered artwork, the images that were used to create that image receive a couple bucks or a couple pennies. Or... And so, with that, you could actually you could allow for artists to continue to get paid for the work that they make, to incentivize artists to keep making work because A, it'll make the AI better and this system without having to work as hard. We could fundamentally transform. Instead of saying, hey, we're afraid this is going to cost us our jobs and that corporations are going to push us out of the arts, we could create an equitable system that says, we are going to make it so you don't have to work as frequently. You don't have to rely, uh, you know, you don't have to rely as much on gigs and commissions and things like that. We're going to use AI, but in the using of AI, we are actually going to compensate you for the work that you've already done and for the work that you might do in the future, so long as you allow our device, our tool, which is the stable diffusion, to create images from it. And you know, you can work at a system where credit credits given. There's lots of ways to do this. You could say, actually, instead of you having to code five days a week, um, we're going to have chatbot GPT do all the coding, but we will still need quality assurance for all the code because we want to make sure that it runs in the, in the systems that it's supposed to run in. We want to make sure that there's no errors that the chatbot didn't, that the chatbot missed. We want to make sure that if um, the code is tied it is tying two sets of data together that you actually map in where the data is supposed to go because you really shouldn't share the data with the chatbot. On and on it goes, right? And so you could say, five days a week, you're going to work three days a week. And for the three days, all you're going to do is you're going to do QA, right? You're going to code yourself and to use the code from the chatbot. Same thing with, uh, you know, same thing with some of the. Um, the legal field is actually a really cool place where chatbot GPT could be used to help make the lives of lawyers easier. And instead of saying, hey, we're going to put some lawyers out of work, you could say, hey, actually, what we're going to do is um, instead of putting you out of work, we're just going to have you review the items that comes out of the chatbot. Same thing for people who write policies in, in, or procedures in organizations. You get the basic idea. Any profession that has to do with art or documentation of any kind, you could effectively partially replace some of these robots. And here's the thing. Automation is getting better. It's getting better all the time. And I don't know when this will happen, but eventually there will not be a ton of need for labor as we understand work as we understand it right now. So the question always has to come back to what do we do as a society to make sure that even though work becomes less and less necessary, 
we still allow for people to meet their basic needs. And one of the answers that I've seen and that I really love is, hey, we should all get a universal basic income, or we should be assigned a robot that does our job for us, and we should reap the benefits of that robot. We have fewer people who work, right? Everyone gets a set, a set of basic income. They get these basic rights. And if you want to work, if you feel compelled to work, treat you much better we, because the work that becomes necessary, right? Um, for the society as opposed to necessary for the individual to survive, right? And so society then places a greater emphasis and a greater value on work. So for those people who do want to, to, to do work, they can find places to do work and that work that's actually necessary can be given the value it deserves to the community as opposed to, you know, scraping by survive. Could using the automation technologies we have now and that are in development fundamentally change the way people live and work throughout the world? Are we going to do that? Probably box over there, which is really just a step to the right. Um, capitalism isn't going to let that happen. What's the solution? Get rid of capitalism. You need a smarter person than me to figure out how to do that. But ultimately, ultimately, there are opportunities. Automation should take advantage of the automation that we ourselves, and then we should we should mandate, we should force those in positions of power to give us our generate money without us. We need to create a situation where work is where work is only necessary in certain cases. Not everyone has to work, and that we reimagine and redignify what work is in our daily lives. I think Chatbot GPT and Stable Diffusion are actually really amazing starting places for some of these conversations. I would love to see the community come together and you know decide that we're going to go a separate way with work. Again, not really sure that's gonna happen, but you know, there are ways to make this a more equitable world use these automations to do so. And one day I hope to be able to see that future. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, throw a like on it, share with your friends, and subscribe for more of our content. You can also find all of our videos and clips on YouTube.com. Just search Let Them Eat Bread, and you'll find all of our content. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye for now.